So I'm happy to be here to tell you a little bit about Athersys, uh, our multi-stem platform, uh, and also our cardiovascular applications. So uh, briefly, uh, we're a company that's been uh, around for many, many years. Uh, we started in the cell therapy space around 2003 and have been developing uh, our position, our platform, our technology and product opportunities since then. I'm going to focus on multi-stem. I'll, I'll look at cardiovascular disease in particular. But one of the themes I want to talk about here, we're developing a platform product candidate that, that can be used in a variety of indications. And that's driven largely from the activity of the cells. They're multimodal. So you've heard about mechanism of action today. Our cells deliver benefit through multiple mechanisms of action in different disease contexts, but also uh, specifically in the cardiovascular space. Now briefly, if you look at our development status, uh, we've got a number of activities uh, in clinical development right now, and we've got uh, substantial programs behind each of our clinical development programs. Our strategy has been to take a lead opportunity or two in each of these therapeutic areas, inflammatory and immune, cardiovascular, and neurological. Uh, I'm not going to touch much on uh, inflammatory and immune and neurological. I'll say a few words about it because I think it's illuminating with respect to the mechanism of activity with respect to our cells. I'll focus on cardiovascular here. But suffice it to say, we have significant opportunity in the cardiovascular space. We've completed a phase one study in AMI. We're setting up to do a phase two study right now. And behind that, we have uh, clinic-ready uh, programs in both PVD and CHF. Briefly, uh, what we are developing here is an allogeneic stem cell product. So our goal, uh, and what we've demonstrated so far uh, from a preclinical and clinical perspective, is that we can deliver the, self, the cells and the cell product off the shelf. So what we are striving to achieve here is a uh, product that can be cryopreserved uh, or stored in other ways at a clinical site and be ready to use uh, without worry of transplantation or rejection, be ready to use by the clinician to treat AMI, CHF, or PVD, or other cardiovascular indications. So that's a difference uh, from what we just heard, which were uh, basically autologous approaches, where you're doing a procedure to capture cells from that patient and then put them back in. Uh, this is a biologics or a, a pharmaceutical drug paradigm, so this is a difference as well. Now, what that uh, is based on is having a consistent product that you can manufacture at scale. And I think one of the other key themes uh, that's going to be important for our development as a company is that we have best-in-class manufacturing platform. And that's driven by the, the basic technology we're employing. Uh, we have a, a, a stem cell product here that's upstream with respect to potency, uh, and it allows us as well to produce lots of cells from a single donor. And so what that translates into, in particular, we can produce up to hundreds of thousands to millions of doses from a single donor. That allows us to run large-scale manufacturing. It allows us to focus on consistency of product and potency and performance. So this is a big distinctive factor for our, uh, our product, and I'll talk about that briefly. We have a strong intellectual property uh, position, um, and I'll, I'll briefly touch on that. And we have an efficient development model. So what we're able to do is leverage the safety work we've done preclinically uh, in the early clinical work to apply uh, our cells in a variety of different indications. This is true in the cardiovascular space, but also in other areas. So we can move very quickly uh, to phase one, two studies, uh, and we can do it very cost effectively. Now, one of, the, one of the themes that you've heard, I think, from uh, both of uh, my colleagues who presented before is that benefit here is driven through paracrine effects. So it's really the proteins that the cells are producing that are driving benefit. And what we're seeing with multi-stem, that's exactly the case. Uh, we're seeing different types of benefits and in different indications. In the AMI case, the two primary mechanisms that we're seeing are inflammation reduction. There's a significant inflammatory cascade following an ischemic event. And neovasculogenesis. Uh, uh, so we're seeing new vessel formation. So you've heard that theme before from my colleagues. Uh, we have two mechanisms that are really driving the benefit here, and I'll, I'll mention that in a moment. The other aspect here is the cell product itself does not have a long residency time. So I think uh, we heard a question about that earlier. Our cell product is largely gone from the body within two weeks, uh, and that's the case in the cardiovascular uh, area. And interestingly, we're seeing durable effect 
well beyond the residency time. So we're intervening in processes early, and we're having a cascade of longer-term effects that are driving benefit in different disease indications. Now, briefly on the manufacturing platform, uh, what's driving our advantage, and I'm just using MSC as a comparator here, uh, multi-stem is not an MSC product, we can produce uh, at a faster rate and uh, we can go on many more doublings than uh, other cell types. That gives us the manufacturing advantage I'm talking about. It is the basis for a manufacturing platform. Now, one of the uh, important aspects of that is product characterization. Not only can we expand consistently, across different runs, but we can characterize the product. And this is very important. Uh, in fact, we've taken the lead with others to define potency assays uh, with the FDA. We want to know how the product performs. We want to know that it performs consistently uh, with different patients. And we do that by assaying uh, the cell product. These assays here are early ones we've developed. We've got others in the work. They're relevant for cardiovascular disease. Uh, immunomodulation uh, is important. Uh, Anti-inflammatory effect is important. You see that in our T-cell proliferation assay. And then angiogenesis. We've identified the proteins that are required for the therapeutic impact, new vessel formation, uh, with our cell product. And we can characterize each product run and each product uh, with respect to potency uh, of the angiogenic activity. So this is very important, and I think this distinguishes us from many of the other cell therapy players. We can put on the shelf a consistent product that we know is going to perform consistently. Uh, our stem cell portfolio is, is deep and broad. We've got over uh, 40 patent families, 50-plus granted patents, 150 applications globally. We're covering composition of matter, methods of use, and, and methods of production. And we're continuing to build that out as uh, we grow and learn with the platform. Now, on the product development side, uh, three key areas, and we've done some partnership in other areas such as orthopedic, immunological uh, is, is an important one for us, cardiovascular obviously is of real importance for the company, and the neurological. Briefly going to touch on immunological before I get into cardiovascular. Um, as you may know, we've got a partnership with Pfizer, and our lead program there is in the IBD space, uh, ulcerative colitis. We've got a double-blind placebo-controlled study with Pfizer, approximately 125 patients. Uh, that's well underway, and it's going to pr produce top-line results in the first quarter of next year. Uh, this is an exciting area for us. It really builds off two dimensions uh, of product performance, the immunomodulatory effects generally, but also the anti-inflammatory effects, uh, which are important when you think about the flares associated with ulcerative colitis. We've done a substantial amount of preclinical work to understand the mechanism, and we see uh, effect in that preclinical work on the indicators of uh, immune response and inf uh, inflammation, but we also see in the, the pathology work a reduction uh, in the damage associated with those things. This is similar to what we would see in the cardiovascular space as well. And what we're seeing also uh, when, you, when you look at indications like ulcerative colitis and GVHD, which is another area of focus, we're intervening in multiple uh, pathways to produce therapeutic benefit. Um, and again, this is to underscore the multimodal nature of a product like Multistem in an off-the-shelf cell therapeutic. Uh, in the GVHD space, we reported out this data earlier. I don't need to go through it uh, much, but suffice it to say the product's safe uh, when it's delivered. Uh, and this is an infused product, uh, which is going to be different than what I talk about with the cardiovascular space, which is delivered via catheter. Uh, but importantly, in this phase one study, we saw a significant reduction in GVHD, and this was a durable effect. We were delivering product at day two. GVHD manifested itself over 30 to 60 days, and we were seeing an absolute change of uh, 25 to, to 30 percent uh, lower than what you would expect from historical precedence for our patient population. So let me turn to cardiovascular disease, the focus of today's discussion. Uh, we have completed a phase one study. Uh, we've reported out both uh, four-month data and one-year data. And uh, the approach we're taking here is the delivery of the cells locally. We're using a microinfusion catheter. This is not a standard intercoronary device. We're actually bringing the cells into the coronary artery, and we're injecting through the vessel wall uh, the cell product. So it's actually staying on site. There is some movement migration of the cells around the site of injury in the heart. Uh, but we are putting, uh, what, we, what we did in the phase one, we were putting 20 million, 50 million, or 100 million cells into this peri-infarct zone, really to drive therapeutic benefit. 
It's a, it's a very uh, straightforward delivery approach. It takes about a minute to deploy. Uh, it's very uh, advantaged over the endocardial approaches where you're actually going into the heart muscle. But we're putting product on site and it stays there to deliver therapeutic benefit. We're not losing product, a significant amount of the product to the pulmonary system, which is an issue with the intercoronary devices or systemic delivery. <laughs> Uh, in our phase one study, uh, we saw positive results. Uh, the product was safe and well tolerated at all dose levels. Uh, there were no changes uh, in vital signs or infusion-related toxicities uh, or anything of that nature during the first 30 days or the four-month period following treatment. We saw improvement in heart function over a four-month period. And we, we focused on ejection fraction. So you, we've heard a little bit about that before. There are other measures as well. Uh, that we've looked at, uh, both in this study but also preclinically, uh, they're consistent with improvement in function. But we also saw uh, sustained improvement over one year. So it's, it's not often that folks look at functional metrics over a longer period of time, but we did take a look at that and we saw a sustained improvement over time. What we saw was that the 50 million dose group showed significant improvement over baseline. Uh, and we saw trends towards improvement uh, with the 100 million in the, uh, the more severe patient population. So this gives you a, a flavor of the, uh, the data on ejection fraction of four months. Uh, you can see for all subjects, uh, we saw a delta in ejection fraction, and this is an absolute percentage change. This is not a relative percentage change. So I think the, uh, the question was, what's the absolute for, uh, uh, you know, for, for uh, the delivery of uh, autologous product? Um, somebody said 5%. We're talking about, uh, with respect to all the patients in the study of the groups, we're uh, that we focused on, 10% for all subject, and when you look at the most severe patient population, an absolute change of over 12% over a four-month period. This is a substantial change uh, that if we can replicate in a phase two study, control phase two study is going to be meaningful. Our clinical advisors tell us, and we know from the literature, that a change of 3 to 5%, absolute change in ejection fraction for the sick patient population and the STEMI population is going to be clinically significant over time when you look at clinical outcomes. So we're very excited by the results here and it's providing the basis for our phase two trial design and planning. Now, when we took a look at the data over the one year follow-up period, uh, you know, again, we looked at other measures of cardiac function, the left ventricular ejection fraction being one, wall motion, stroke volume being another. Um, the blue here are the treated patient population, treated patients. It's a relatively small study. We had 25 patients on study 19 were treated, six in our registry control group, which is represented here in red. Um, what you can see is we've got sustained improvement over time with respect to each of these functional uh, improvement metrics. And this is substantial. So you're talking about, you know, an absolute improvement uh, of, you know, six or seven percent for all the groups. Remember, we had one dose group that was significantly better than the other dose groups um, relative to the registry control group. And then when you look at the, the sickest patients here, those with the LVEFs below 45 uh, percent, the improvement is uh, even greater. Uh, wall motion, where you want to see a decline, uh, we saw substantial improvement over the registry group there over a one-year month, uh, a one -year period. And then in stroke volume, the same basic theme. And again, uh, this will translate into clinical benefit uh, when you look at other clinical outcomes, such as MACE, uh, et cetera which is what we would do in our, our, next, um, our next study. We've done work, obviously, uh, as I mentioned, in uh, PVD and CHF as well. Um, that's been preclinical to date, uh, though I said we, we, we are ready to go into the clinic uh, when the time's right. Uh, we've seen substantial improvement in PVD models. You can see that here uh, in the, the picture frames uh, on the top of the, the slide here. Uh, we have a control group PBS and a, a multi-stem group below, and you can see uh, an improvement um, over the control in the vascular blood flow in these images uh, of the uh, animal models we work with. And then in CHF as well, you're seeing a, an improvement in vessel formation out a uh, relatively short period of time, four weeks in this particular case in the animal models. So the consistent themes we're seeing in the cardiovascular space, new vessel formation, but we're seeing in addition to that a reduction of inflammation and we're seeing either directly or indirectly a benefit in terms of, of preserving uh, the function uh, and uh, we're preserving uh, cells, cardiomyocytes, uh, that are in the site, the peri-infarct zone, the site of injury. 
Now, one of the things we've done uh, non-clinically is, is look at our cell performance relative to other cell types. Again, uh, the, the comparator we use most generally is the MSC. That's probably the most likely competitor to our off-the-shelf product. Um, and when we look at the key mechanisms of action, inflammation, immunomodulation, and angiogenesis, we outperform MSC. And in the bone marrow case in angiogenesis, we outperform bone marrow cells uh, in each of these types of assays. <laughs> so we feel we have good knowledge of the mechanisms that are driving benefit. We know how to measure the performance uh, of our product with respect to those mechanisms. And we think we have the basis or a foundation of distinctiveness in terms of product performance over the other cell therapies out there, particularly the ones that are going to be most competitive to us. Just briefly, in the neurological space, we've done a lot of work with stroke. We've demonstrated we can deliver a product up to seven days following a stroke in animal models and show therapeutic benefit as measured by a neurological function. And again, the, the theme that we've developed around stroke and other, uh, uh, other uh, CNS injury models is that the delivery of the cell product is having benef benefit through multiple mechanisms. So in the CNS case, we're having a local effect in reducing the inflammatory and immunomodulatory action in the brain, but we're also driving down the systemic response, which is important uh, in the magnitude of the injury uh, in the CNS following, uh, following stroke or traumatic brain injury and the like. And again, I show this to you because it, it, it replicates the theme we're seeing in the cardiovascular space and, and frankly, in, in each of the indication areas in which we're playing. Multimodal activity driven from a cell platform. So a cell that's producing lots of proteins in response to the injury uh, in, which it's, uh, in which it's seeing. So we have an ongoing stroke study. We just launched this uh, very recently. Um, and we're going to move this forward with, uh, you know, data out uh, at the end of 2013 or so, roughly speaking. Uh, but we're delivering the product up to two days, uh, roughly a day and a half to two days following the stroke. And then, you know, uh, this is an investor conference, so I, I need to tell you, uh, we're well capitalized. We've got, uh, you know, a strong balance sheet uh, to move, uh, you know, the, the programs forward. Um, we've got good partnerships in place with, with Pfizer being a lead partner. Uh, we envision that partnership's going to be important as we go forward uh, in a variety of different of our programs, but also in the cardiovascular space. Um, but uh, we're ready to go. We've got, uh, we've got good programs. We've got a good platform to build upon. So thanks for your attention. Thank you, Jake. We have, we're, we're running a couple of minutes behind. Yep.